Welcome to our lesson about the browser pane. The browser pane appears on the left side of your screen here. If you don't see it, you may have accidentally turned it off by clicking this little X. To enable the browser pane, go to View, User Interface, and ensure that it's checked in the drop down list. The browser pane reopens. It lists everything in your file in a tree structure indicating how it was built. In the part environment, all of your features will be shown. Extrusion 1, Extrusion 2 in my case. Let's go to my assembly now. In the assembly environment, all your components will be listed. Let's go to my drawing document. Here, all of your sheets and views will be displayed. The browser is a very convenient way to navigate through your files and pretty standard in 3D CAD software. Expand any branch of the tree by clicking on the plus symbol. Collapse the branches by clicking the minus symbol. Let's go to my assembly document. Each main branch that you see here left justified is known as a parent, and within it, when you expand its branch, are all of the items that are dependent upon it. These dependents are indented and they're known as children. You, of course, can suppress a child without suppressing the parent, but if you suppress the parent item, you will automatically suppress the children or dependents. Let's right click on the top item and select Expand All Children. Now our tree is seen at its fullest view. Now let's right click on the top level of the assembly and select Collapse All Children. And this is the most compact view of the tree for this assembly. You'll notice that some of the items in the tree are grayed out like these planes here. That means that they're currently set to not visible. You'll notice though that when I hover over an item, it does become highlighted in the graphic area. And if I click on it, it becomes selected. Let's collapse the origin folder and let's expand Mount 01. Notice that Mount 01 also has an origin folder. Let's expand that too. All file names in the tree are generated by Inventor. The first instance of an item is named 1, like flush 1, mate 1. The second instance is named 2, and so on. You can rename any item with a slow double click. The box around the name indicates that you can type in your entry. Enter your new name. Let's call it side. Press enter to accept. And let's undo that name change with a control Z. Currently, the background of the entire browser is white. That means I'm at the top level of the assembly. Let me double click on Mount 1. That activates Mount 1. Generally, it's better to double click on the icon rather than on the name. If you double click too slowly, you get the rename box instead of activating your selection. Now, only the mount features have a white background and the rest of the assembly has a gray background. That means that this is the active part of the assembly. In the graphic area, the inactive parts are grayed out and they're semi-transparent. Only Mount 1 appears opaque in the graphic area. If we want to return to the top level of the assembly, it's very easy. Let's just scroll to the top of the browser pane and then double click on the assembly icon. Inventor processes our request and now the entire browser pane appears with a white background, meaning that we're at the top level of the assembly. A moment ago, I'd mentioned the origin folder that each component contains. Here's all of the standard planes, axes, and a center point. Let's right click on a plane and select visibility. Now we can see the YZ plane in the graphic area. Let's hide it with a right click and unselect visibility. Inventor automatically assigns an origin folder to each component and you're not able to delete it. Every item in the tree has a unique icon indicating what it is. Planes and axes, the flush mate, the standard mate. Here's the icon for a solid. Let's go take a look at our part document. Here's the icon for extrusion. This is the sketch icon. And when there's an error, you're going to see the standard error or warning symbol next to the item in the tree. This helps you easily identify where you need to diagnose. Let's return to my assembly. Notice that there's a push pin on the base one icon. That means that this component can't be moved. It's called grounded. The first file inserted into an assembly is always grounded. We can remove the grounding, right click and deselect grounded. These red and green arrows next to the mate indicate that these features are adaptive. They reference or are dependent upon another part and they'll automatically adjust to changes in the part that they reference. We can turn adaptivity on and off with a right click 
and selecting it from the contextual menu. Right-clicking on any item in the tree, obviously, gives you an item-specific contextual menu where you can edit the item or make additional selections like visibility, suppression, and others we just mentioned, grounding, adaptive, expanding and collapsing children, etc. If I right-click on any mate in the browser, I can find the other part to which it's constrained. The other half is now selected in the tree and in the graphic area. Let's return to our part document now. At the bottom of the tree, we've got an item known as the end of part marker. It's indicated by this red octagon icon with a white X through it. You can drag the end of part marker up and down to temporarily exclude a file from processing. You can also drop items below the end of part marker to exclude them temporarily from processing. Features below the marker can be individually suppressed or unsuppressed or deleted all at once. Let's right click the end of part marker and then select this option Delete all features below EOP. That stands for the end of part marker. Dependent features are suppressed when a parent is dragged below the end of part marker. To suppress a feature, just right click and select Suppress Feature. Now it appears crossed out in the browser. To unsuppress the feature, right click and select Unsuppress Feature. Dragging the end of part marker to the top of your tree and then dragging it down one feature at a time recreates the part since part features are created sequentially. Dragging the end of part marker to the top of the file also reduces part size significantly, just like a compressed file. So if you happen to find a file or open a file which seems to be blank, check to see if the end of part marker is at the bottom of the file. If it's not, just drag it down and your part should appear. At the top of the browser pane are some tools. These tools will vary depending upon what kind of document you've currently got open. Here are the assembly options. Drawing, and back to our part document. The binoculars launch a search application. Here you can filter to search for, here you can find items using the filters for sketches or features. Let's close this dialog window. Click the funnel to view the browser filters. We can hide UCS, that's the user coordinate system, work features, notes, documents, and warnings. And that'll just unclutter our tree a little bit if it is getting too busy. Click this sub arrow to select favorites. This will display the content center from which you can easily navigate to a part you'd like to import. Let's return to the model browser. Click on the sub menu arrow and select model. Let's go take a look at our assembly now. Here you can select from various configurations of your part. Here I've got master and default available. Currently our tree is structured in what's called assembly view. We can also see our tree in modeling view, which gives us the skeleton for how it was built rather than how it was assembled in the assembly environment. Let's return to assembly view. Throughout this course, we'll be using the browser pane frequently to navigate around and make changes to our work, so you'll have plenty of opportunity to practice. This concludes our lesson about the browser pane.